Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome everyone. It's been a while since I've done a video and I haven't really been out in the shed much other than during this probably the last month. For the last few months, one of the crazes seems to have been making gonks, which I've got a couple here. When I looked into doing these, I found very, very few videos on YouTube. There's one by the Tiny Turner. Uh, she does an absolute brilliant video on how to make these and it's where I started from. However, what I've found is that there's a few little niggly things that I've found on the way and hopefully also cover in this video a few of the extra things you might need to think about. This video is going to be making Gunk Dolph here. It's uh, based on an image I have of Gandalf, uh, which is for the hat, which is the main thing. But since I've made that video, I've actually gone on and made the, the party Gonk who's got his party hat on with his balloons and he's also got a bottle in his hand. Today I'm using a piece of oak and a piece of mahogany for this piece and the mahogany will be for the hat and the oak will be for the body. First thing I want to do is get these between centres. I want to get a tenon on both ends for the body and I just want a tenon on one end for the hat. The reason why I'm putting just one tenant on the hat and two tenants on the body is that when I actually make these, when I turn off the hat, I will actually leave a 10mm spigot on there, whereas with the body, I'll then drill a hole in one end and then flip it around on the lathe so I can turn the body and then finish off the bottom. So that when I pass it off, the hole is already going to be down the centre. Once I roughly trued up the hat, I can then mark out on the piece roughly how I wanted to shape the whole piece. Once I've got all those lines, I can start taking the top of the hat down to where the, the thickest part is of where the, the hat is actually going to curl over at the back. I could then start taking in the bottom, the bottom lip, and then taking out more waste wood before I then finally get on with all the carving. One of the questions I've seen posted on social media is, why do you not turn it all out of one piece of wood? Well, to me, there's three reasons I've found for this. First, very much like you'll see in this project, is that I use scrap wood. So most of my wood is just bought from the local sawmill, which is sold as firewood. And they're all a bit lock cuts, and sometimes with a bigger bit, but they're ideal for doing projects like this. The second reason, which is what a lot of people go for, is that you want two different types of wood. So that, especially if you're gonna have it as a natural wood finish, the, the hat is actually totally contrasting to the body. Now the third reason, which is for my case here, and really for both the gonks that I've made just recently, is that I want the hard oak wood body, but I want a softer wood for doing all the carving. And by using mahogany for, for the hat, it's a lot softer, it's a lot quicker to actually carve away, and it's easier to sand off uh, to get the final shape that you want. Now I've found that the best way is to actually turn the hat first and the main reason for that is, is that the hat needs to be larger than the actual body because you need to get that overlap of the, the top so that you can then when you put fur up it's, hot, it's hidden under the top of the hat. So therefore by making the hat first you've got your larger size you can always turn the body down if you need to. For the carving I use my Dremel for taking out the bulk of the wood I'm using a saber tooth piece and it really really does take out the wood really really quickly. Once I've got the overall initial shape on there I've flipped to some tungsten bits which are then just a lot smoother just to refine the shape and just smooth it out a bit. Now for the hat because it's not totally smooth on the curves there I want to leave some form of a texture in there which is why I haven't sanded at all totally sort of smooth and flat. With the sanding I've gone through all the grit. I 
got the black and white spirit stains from chestnut here. I'm going to put a little bit of black in here. And I'm also going to put a little bit of white because I want to turn this into a grey. I did make a little bit of a mistake when I poured the white in. I failed to shake the bottle first. So the first lot I put in was literally all solvent. And you can probably tell that because after I've stirred up the black to turn it into a grey, when I'm brushing it onto the to the hat, you can start seeing the, the grey slowly turn back to black again. But it doesn't seem to affect it. Uh, it may well have um, just thinned things out a bit. And that's why afterwards that I used the spray-on sanding sealer rather than putting it on by hand because I didn't want to risk thinning out the colours anymore, especially since I'd probably left this overnight to dry. Knocked that back with a Niweb and then just gave it a coat of Wood Wax 22. Now because of the odd shape of the hat, I've had to use my buffing mop on the drill just to fully buff up the, the wax on there and it's not very good, it doesn't knock out a lot of hairs and I have to pick those all out afterwards. Parting off, what I found the best way is, is that because I was going to put a 10mm spigot on this, take it down to near the size. It hasn't got sharp edges on it so it shouldn't catch. It's probably safer than, than using the calipers. The body, as I've got the 10mm spigot in the hat, I then just drill the 10mm hole in the top of the body. I tried to make this about 20-30mm deep just so that when I part it off, I've still got a full length hole there for, it to, for the hat to locate in. I'll then flip that around in the lathe. I can then shape all the body for a straightforward tapered top and bottom. I've seen some people where they just taper the top in and have the bot bottom wider. It's just down to personal preference. I'll then cut off the excess from the bottom because I've got the tenon on that end as well. It's handy to keep hold of because you can use that to turn down for things like the nose or if you're creating hands or anything like that or other pieces. So don't throw it away. Found the best way to make the bottom as smooth as possible is to use the skew in a knife cut. So that way the actual point of the skew is cutting right through the fibres and you don't get no tear out and you get a really really nice smooth finish on the bottom. Once that's all done just the normal sanding, sanding sealer, knock it all back with a nye web and wood wax 22 again. Finally just parting off, it doesn't matter where I part off, I mean as long as I know that the, the actual hole that I drilled is deep enough in the top there so I haven't got to worry about doing that again. So just be careful obviously when you drill your hole. Because this is a wizard, he's obviously going to need a staff and before I did the staff I decided I wanted to make an arm for him. And so therefore what I found is another nice piece of offcut which is another piece of oak, you can see it's a triangular shape. And I've found the best way for this, because oak will break apart because of the, the really wide deep grain, it's best to drill your hole first of all, and then turn it down. So just using the variety tool, skew and the detail gauge, shaping the, the hand and the arm. And finally then I think I took it down to about a three and a half or four mil spigot on the end for what will be drilled into the body. Same as before, sand it all back, uh, sanding sealer, wood wax 22 on there and stuff it up the best of hand. What you don't see as off camera is, you'll see later on when I start putting these together, is that I've actually just took the arm onto the bandsaw where the actual joint is between the upper and lower arm and just cut it in half. I've then took it to the bench sander and then just holding it roughly at about 45 degrees, put a 45 degree angle on both so that at least when they're joined together, you've got an arm that it looks like it's more or less at right angles holding the staff. The staff, because again, this piece of wood was actually fairly quite long, I had plenty there again, just to take it down with a skew. Uh, a staff usually has some form of a, a, of a head on it. And I decided that rather than say, making it rough, like probably a lot of them are, I just put a little bit of detail in there with the lines on the skew. Again, sanded down and finally parted off. The difference between the actual staff and the arm when I parted them off was that with the arm I did part the hand, end of the hand off to start with because at least that way I could sand it all up on the lathe and, and wax it all at once. The staff was not so much an issue because they're, they're little ends on each end. Again it needed to be about the three and a half mil to actually go through, through the hand. So there's an awful lot of hand steadying with the work on here just to cut out any form of vibration and so that you have constantly got a good cut.
the last thing to make them was obviously the nose. Gong wouldn't be a gong without having the nose there poking through all that fur. So that was actually a nice quick and easy turn. It was just the last piece left over from that piece of wood that I created the arm and the staff with. So it just made more sense just to carry on using that. Finally with everything made, it's down to the assembly. I'm using just ordinary wood PVA glue to glue the arm together. I just find you hold it together for 10 seconds, you can leave it for five minutes and it's then you're able to pick it up and use it for whatever you like. I'll then mark out for where I want the nose, just mark it off with a sharpie and also assemble the arm with the staff so I can see where, at what height I want the actual arm to go in onto the body so that at least the staff will, will reach down and touch, touch onto the ground with the body. Once I've marked both of these, the best way I've found, uh, especially if you haven't got a bradle or anything like that, is just use your life centre just to mark the, the actual holes. It just makes drilling a lot, lot easier and you're not going to get the drill bit wander over the place. It doesn't matter how deep you do these holes, just make sure they're deep enough because you've got plenty of wood that you can drill into. The final thing then to sort out is the fur and what I do is I mark out on the body sort of each side where I want the fur to reach. What I do is mark on the body a line inside of where the fur will be and that's because that I will then sand off all the wax in that area so that at least when the CA glue goes onto the actual body with the fur it's got something to stick to. The mistake I made here though was I actually then glued the nose in before I did the sanding. Do your sanding off or you glue the nose in. The hardest work is, is actually cutting the fur and getting everything correct. When you cut the fur just make sure that the scissor blade which is going through the fur side really going through the fur so that it's up into the sort of like the backing fabric and then just try and take small snips as you go all the way around. For the actual top where the nose goes, I found just from my experiences that just literally just cut a slit straight down and then cut a wider bit at the bottom where you get to the bottom just so that it's sort of like it's almost like a t-shape so at least that way you've got something that will wrap around the nose when i actually glue the fur on onto the body i prefer to use thick ca and the reason for that is is that it sticks fairly quickly it doesn't go off instantly but by using the thick it's not absorbing all into the backing material if you use a thin CA, what you're going to probably find is it's going to absorb right into the backing material and then you're going to find that it starts sticking the fur down. It might be better to have it on something where the body's not likely to roll around. I mean, it's only just briefly that you've got it there because you, by the time you've actually got the fur on, you're picking it up and you're just gently pushing down all the sides. Glue the hat on with PVA glue. I much prefer using PVA on the arm though because that way you've got that more time to adjust it. I've actually made six of these gonks now, obviously picking up more and more little details as I go along. The very first one I did was, I think, very much like the Tiny Turner did on her demonstration. It was that type of conical hat which goes up to a point. I then decided to have a go at what I call my gentleman gonk, which is with the top hat, coloured with, which is just through the small airbrush. I then decided to do the bowler hat. That one was a bit more complicated because when you look at it close, I've done it so that the the front and the back are, um, are fairly flat and the side has got sort of like the rim going up on the sides. Fourth one I did was the Viking one and that was great fun to do. The whole thing was done out of oak, I think apart from the horns. The horns were something like Oroco or, or some other light wood like that. Uh, they had to be shaped on the Dremel but the actual the helmet on there I just used the silver gilt cream and I also did that for the axe head as well. So that was probably my first one I created with some form of an arm to, to actually hold something. And, and there is also a shield on there as well. The fifth one was obviously the, the, the wizard and the sixth one here is my party gonk. And I've got to say, I'm really, really pleased with this. I'm still unsure about what I'm doing with the fur. I don't know whether I need to give this one a trim up or anything, but I just do like that sort of like that rough look of it all dangling down. So if you if you perch it on the front of something with it dangling down, it, it just adds a different character. It's almost like a Christmas party one really. So it's got his balloons, it's got his bottle of drink in the side, and I've gone for sort of like that, that paper hat you get out of the Christmas crackers. The other thing I found as well, and it shows really on the, the gonk I did with the bowler hat, when I cut the fur, 
where it's normally going that way, what I did, I cut it so it was the opposite way. So therefore it was naturally going the opposite way. And then by brushing it down the other way, it creates this really bushy effect and it just added something different to it. I'm constantly looking around for different ideas of what to do for different types of themes of gonks and just to add to the collection. Thanks a lot for watching.